Hello, and welcome to a series of videos exploring the life, work, and interests of Thomas Barrett, a particularly fascinating character in Georgian Manchester. A Mancunian, he was born in 1743 and died in 1820. His name is relatively unknown, although I have published two academic peer-reviewed essays on him, which are linked below this video. Frankly, relatively little is known about Barrett, however certain key pieces of information survive, enabling us to get some picture of his life, interests, occupation and character. Perhaps one of the most important reasons for his relative obscurity is the, is the fact he's very much a provincial antiquary. Antiquaries were interested in documenting in text and illustration, rescuing and ultimately preserving history and historical objects or fragments. The centre of antiquarian culture in Georgian Britain was firmly rooted in London. The Society of Antiquaries of London was founded in 1718, with its first meeting taking place in January 1718. There are also other notable groupings of antiquaries based in places like Cambridge, which included William Cole, Richard Goff, a future director of the Society of Antiquaries of London, James Bentham, Michael Tyson, and James Essex, an architect. Members of the clergy, as well as well-to-do, wealthy gentlemen, were typically antiquaries, as illustrated by the 1747 portrait of Charles Chauncey by Francis Heyman, now in the collection of the Yale Centre for British Art in New Haven. Relatively speaking, Manchester was very much a backwater in antiquarian studies, and Barrett lacked the aristocratic leisure that other antiquaries possessed. Manchester, however, was awash with ancient historical artefacts and built heritage. Almost everything was swept away by the Victorian redevelopment of Manchester as an industrial base, but, for example, Audsall Hall in Salford, Manchester Cathedral, Cheatham's Library, and the Old Wellington Inn, I think give you some idea about the historic character of Manchester. Lancashire broadly was also at the time of Barrett, much like today, awash with material of antiquarian interest. In other words, Lancashire offered a ready amount of material for the diligent amateur or professional antiquary to document, preserve, publish, interpret, or even collect. In particular, the desire to collect was strong amongst antiquaries, as demonstrated by this 1835 painting by Edward William Cook, The Antiquary's Cell, now in the collection of the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Some sense of Barrett's collecting can be gauged by his engraved self-portrait, found in a number of his manuscripts in Cheatham's. Information on Barrett's life is particularly scant. Nothing is known, for example, of his education and where his passions for antiquities came from. Unlike other antiquaries that I'm working on, such as George Shaw, we don't appear to have any surviving or traced diaries to help flesh out any of his personal qualities. Instead, we have to infer these from the rec records um, that he made as an antiquary and what he left behind the vast majority of which are in manuscript books containing drawings and text and in the collection of Cheatham's Library in Manchester. Additionally, there are four later 19th century articles in The Reliquary, a quarterly archaeological journal and review, which essentially forms a nucleus of published material relating to Barrett's life, career and significance. What emerges from these articles is that Barrett worked as a saddler throughout his life, with his shop on Hanging Ditch, very near to Cheatham's and the Cathedral in Manchester. They also indicate that he was married three times, and he had children, one of which, Thomas Barrett the Younger, fled to America because of Jacobite sympathies. Perhaps less expected is the record of his cork prosthetic leg. We know that he lost one leg as a young man, but which leg remains unknown. Ultimately, and perhaps sadly, 
His grave in Manchester Cathedral is now unmarked and there is no memorial to a man who effectively was Manchester's and Lancashire's antiquary. Despite being occupied as a saddler, namely working with leather to make, amongst other items, saddles for the nobility and wealthy customers, Barrett's profession seems to have accommodated an apparently insatiable interest in the trappings of the past. We are unaware of any surviving examples of his leather work, except for the binding of one of his manuscript notebooks in Cheatham's. It attests to the skill and awareness of historical imagery and iconography, particularly in the stamped ermine and diamond motifs found on the boards, the studded boss work, and also the central royal coat of arms. Further indications of this antiquarian interest and engagement with antiquarian scholarship is expressed directly through his membership of Manchester's Literary and Philosophical Society, and the four papers he published in the Society's Transactions, Memoirs, include On the Remains of the Druids, from 1790, Carved Obelisks, from 1796, Antiquities Found in the River Ribble, 1802, and Roman Inscriptions in Manchester, also from 1802. Beyond my two essays examining Barrett's manuscripts and interest in heraldry, and the publicising of his drawings in the Manchester Sketchbook by Cheatham's, the majority of his material is unpublished and unknown. With one further manuscript held in the archives at Manchester Library, and his earliest known manuscript in the Bodleian Libraries in the University of Oxford, a number of his productions survive and attest to his widespread and lifelong investigation of Lancastrian antiquity and heraldry in general. Even at an early age, as my analysis has shown, um, as a teenager, Barrett was absolutely interested in heraldry, Arthurian legend, and the Nine Worthies. A broader interest in other historical antiquarian material, including collecting antiquarian paraphernalia, appears to have developed over time. Barrett's clear self-improvement is evident of the notice of his passing in the, gen in the magazine in the Manchester Gazette on the 4th of November 1820, which reads, On Sunday last, Mr Thomas Barrett, of Hanging Ditch, in his 77th year, he was a character well known as an antiquary to most of the ancient families of England, especially of Lancashire and Cheshire, as well as to many members of the College of Arms, London. His zeal and perseverance in tracing pedigrees is apparent from his numerous manuscripts, which he has left behind him. He had taught himself Latin and even elements of Greek, and had attained very high perfection in drawing and painting. Above all, he was a truly good Christian. A poem written by Barrett's friend Joseph Aston, printed in limited quantities in Black Letter, also attests to Barrett's interest in antiquities, in particular of medieval England. It reads, In Mancunian lived a man who knew much of old times and much of ancient lore. Strange and scarce books had he and curious coins medals and painted glass, and ponderous arms, helmet and breastplates, gauntlets hast and shields, of many kinds, proof against bloody war, swords without number, of all murdering shapes, and one which erst has graced a prince's thigh, more valued than the rest, and more revered, by him who owned it, and by all his friends. He was versed in heraldry, and could tell how all the thanes and all the knights and squires within his shire had sprung from ancient, from times remote, and famed too was he for his industry, for age at work, for much his business called. And yet full many a picture did he paint, pedigrees copied, branch and root and carvings made, of antique shapes, and, almost beyond belief, helmets and shields, 
to rival Greece and Rome, stealing from sleep the time to give them form. Nay, once, grappling patience, he made a suit of mail, with thousands upon thousands of links for the love he bore to ancient arms, for he was curious, and the searching air, which pries without a blush into things scarce or sacred or profane. This series of videos will examine the different themes found in Barrett's remarkable interest in Manchester's and Lancashire's antiquarian history.